So uh, County Manager Amy Cannon will present a certificate to Cheryl Ann. Good evening, Commissioners. This is a certificate of appreciation submitted to Sherilyn Rehos for outstanding service as the Public Information Office videography intern from January 8th to April 16, 2018. Sherilyn, we thank you for your hard work, commitment to producing quality products, and your willingness to learn about county government. Your professionalism and dedication reflect great value upon yourself and Methodist University. Presented this day, April 16th, 2018. Sherilyn, thank you for everything you did. We hope to see you again. Shake the commissioner's hand. Sure, you're not talking tonight? This evening we, we have Judge Steele in the house and I'm sure we'll be hearing from him in a little while. And it's time, Carrie Sutton, who is the chairperson of the Cumberland County Board of Education. Carrie, how about standing up and introducing your guest? Hello everyone. I'm so happy to be here, Thank you. I believe, Mr. Chairman, we do have from the uh, library, Mr. Brian Tyler, where did Brian get to, who's visiting with us tonight. Thank you, Brian. Hey, guys from the school board, you, you saw, you saw a lot of, uh, and you should be proud of, as we are, of, of, of what goes on in Cumberland County Schools. and. And we're just pleased to be able to recognize, hey, not only students, but parents of students who, who have completed a, a, a pretty rigorous program in the Citizens Academy, and we're very proud of them also. It's another finalist of Pond Forest students coming out here again and again. Just a great crowd. <laughs> <laughs> at this time, we're at the public comment period. Um, uh, I'll call on our county manager, Amy Cannon, to read the public uh, comment policy. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The public comment period shall be held at the beginning of the third Monday of each month at 645 and shall last no longer than 15 minutes. Each speaker will have a maximum of three minutes to make remarks until the 15 minute time limit is attained. No time may be yielded to another speaker. <clears throat> Speakers will be acknowledged by the board in the order in which their names appear on the sign-up sheet. Speakers will address the board from the lectern and begin their remarks by stating their name and address. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk. We have four speakers this evening. Our first speaker is Dr. Connie Leitner. Okay. Welcome, welcome again, my friend. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the United Way of Cumberland County, I'd like to thank the Board of Commissioners for giving us an opportunity to give a very brief summary um, of our report. I'm sorry, I already violated the rules. Constance Leitner is my name. <laughs> and um, my address is 795 Asheville Drive, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28311. <laughs> 
Thank you for giving us the opportunity to present the results of the most recent needs assessment um, that was conducted here in Cumberland County. As you guys know, United Way raises funds so that they can support different social service programs in the community, programs that can be the most impactful in the community. In order to make sure that their funds are going to the right places in agencies and different um, organizations that can help the community the most, approximately every five years, they do a needs assessment where basically they send a survey out to county residents and they ask them questions in the area of education, public safety, um, health, and economic, just different economic or financial questions. And we hear directly from them. And ordinarily, every five years, the same basic patterns pop up. However, it's important to continue to do, to do this survey because occasionally there are new things that do pop up um, as really important issues that we need to begin addressing. For instance, if you look at the sheets that you guys were given, between the 2012 and 2016 survey, there's one emerging issue which We've seen it in news lately, but this survey actually caught it first, and that was the issue of abuse, neglect, and assault on children. And so with a lot of the human trafficking issues for, for our teens, um, it, it makes sense that that is an issue that's come up. But if you look at the different results, like I said, um, a lot of them here, they, they show the emergent issues, they show where the money needs to go, and United Way makes sure that if no other programs are funded, at least those top 10, and then they continue to go down the list to try to fund as many of the programs that basically match the biggest needs of the community. Um, I invite you guys to go to the United Way of Cumberland County's website to actually see the entire report. I think it's always neat to hear what the residents have to say directly. And the entire report is there, um, which gives you their responses to the survey. So either you can go to the United Ways website or you can contact Crystal Moore Williams, who's the Community Impact Director, and she can answer any questions that you guys have. Thank you so much, and thank you for what United Way does for our community. You're welcome. Our next speaker is Mr. Tom Clark. Welcome, Mr. Clark. Well, um, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, my name's Tom Clark. I live at 4643 Goldsboro Road, Wade, North Carolina. And what I'm here tonight about, I'd just like to share a letter that uh, Ms. Therese Fick, she's a board member of Blue Ridge Environmental Defense League. This is a letter she addressed to Governor Roy Cooper and Attorney General Josh Stein. And it's in reference to uh, the ACP, <laughs> y'all know. In North Carolina, private security operatives have been and continued to be active in counties in the Path Atlantic Coast Pipeline. During the summer of 2017, I attended a meeting of the Johnson County Local Emergency Planning Committee where representatives of the ACP were present. A speaker who identified himself as Dominion Security described his trip to Standing Rock, North Dakota and then proceeded to tell the attendees that Dominion was monitoring potential resistance, including local opposition to the ACP. The implications were clear, and his future comments were not so subtle attempt to paint local opponents as radicals. Local citizens like the teachers, farmers, ministers, firefighters, doctors, parents, and grandparents throughout eight counties targeted by the ACP. Similar comments were reported from the LEPC meetings in Nash and Robinson County. At public hearings, private security firms from Dominion, ACP, have been observed photographing people who spoke in opposition to the pipeline. They were also observed taking pictures of their license plates. This kind of activity is clearly an attempt to intimidate. And the reason I brought that letter tonight, because I, I experienced some of that just a few months ago. I attended a business breakfast at Highland Country Club that was put on, I think it was City View, I'm not for sure. But their uh, ACP representative was there filling questions. And I had a couple questions I approached her with, and really before she could even answer them, one of her associates came from the side and said, you don't have to answer his questions, that's Tom Clark, he's not a landowner. That right there shows you what they're doing. I didn't even know the woman, but I am a, impacted landowner. I live 900 feet from the pipeline. 
my family member that owns the land that the pipeline is going through lives three states away. So who would that affect more, myself and my family or my other family member? And um, I've got a little packet here with me tonight that I would like to leave with you that reflects why I say the ACP is not good for our, our families, it's not good for our towns and cities, it's not good for our county, and it's not good for our state. And I appreciate your time as always. Thank, thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, thank you for your continued uh, you commitment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I'll make sure. <clears throat> Our ne next speaker is Chief District Court Judge Robert Steele. Thank you, Judge. Good to see you again. Mr. Chair, Commissioners, thanks for having me. As you know, it's my habit to share with you some of our numbers and to keep you updated on some things that are going on here at the courthouse. Uh, for us, last month, you and the citizens ought to know we had 63,725 citizens come through the doors of this courthouse. Probably a good portion of them were dealing with their tax issues that were coming up, but maybe not. Uh, I'm happy to say uh, there were a little under 20,000 hearings scheduled, 19,514. There were 382 items that were seized at our doors by our bailiffs that are protecting UI and the other citizens. Happy to say none of which were firearms this past month. Uh, on the, on the uh, horizon for us, uh, tomorrow we're holding a meeting to strategize on letting the public know about e-filing for domestic violence civil orders. This is where families will be able to file out in Fort Bragg and not bring their kids down to the courthouse. Uh, rape crisis volunteers of Cumberland County at 515 Ramsey Street, another off-site location. The judges will interview folks by Skype and papers will be filed electronically. Uh, so I, I wanna share with you, probably Jordan and Melissa have grown up in an era that all of us are used to, uh, but they will not tolerate, and that is being a paper shuffler. You know, kids, it seems like, show up, they've got smartphones in their hand, parents marvel, and now when you go to restaurants, look at us old fogies, what do we now have in our hands? And so I think we owe them the duty of having the foresight, in Cumberland County especially, to incorporate principles of e-filing because it is in the future, it's coming statewide, why should we be last in Cumberland County? And first to say, why should these young folks have to tolerate paper filings and shufflings when very little people in the country will eventually have to do that. Um, I'm proud to say that Sally Shutt has provided us with some guidance on uh, PSAs and, and some strategies and she will not make the meeting but she will be sending uh, her substitute. There she is and I want to thank her personally for the support. We've got Brenda Jackson here, director of our DSS. Uh, we lead the state in number of kids in DSS custody. Uh, that makes us unique in this state. So we are working together. One of the things many years ago was courts running till seven, eight o'clock at night. I happened to take a break, come down. One of our DSS courts had wind down at 11.30 this morning, finished their business for the day. My comment was, y'all didn't just continue everything and walk out. No, they actually conducted business and they've got the breathing room to give these very important cases, the attention that judges, social workers, lawyers, everyone involved needs to provide them with. Uh, the stepping up initiative that I should recognize Je Glenn Adams, Commissioner Adams for, um, it's on the horizon. And I will simply say, we look forward to working with you and implementing and saving taxpayer dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. I apologize for that. Thanks for being an innovator. Our last speaker is Mr. Tim Kinlaw. My goodness. Can you do it in three, Tim? I'm embarrassed to come up here with a piece of paper. <laughs> hey, Judge, you hear that? Yeah. You've got paper. By the way, we need to thank Tim for the job he's done. Hey, Obviously, hey, hey, how about that? I hope my time ain't started yet. No, you got it. On behalf of the board, I'd like to... Uh, and, and I've not stopped smiling in, in two days now uh, with the uh, selection of Dr. Marvin Conley as the new superintendent of Cumberland County Schools. He's going to bring a lot of it, excitement to our system. Today I'm back. I was here a couple months ago thanking you for the support. This county commissioners has provided more support to the school system, to any of the board in southeast and North Carolina. But I'm here tonight to ask you to please continue that support. 
looking over your presentation that you have as a consider item tonight, uh, we do recognize that we've lost 576 students over the last five years during this study. Uh, I would like to point out, though, that uh, during this time, we've seen a 4.25% increase in revenue as a result of our funding agreement. This is less than 1% per year. At the same time over the last five years, the inflation in the United States has been 7.8%. So even though we receive funds, we've not kept up with inflation. In your presentation, you see how you compare with surrounding counties, but that's not the whole story. When you look at federal, state, and local funding, Cumberland County Schools ranks 75th out of 100 counties in North Carolina. We actually rank below Moore County, Bladen County, and Sampson County in per pupil expenditures. Over the last five years, we have to, while we have lost 576 students, we've also lost over 500 employees through the federal and state cuts. As we go forward with a hopefully a new agreement, we're hopeful the board, as we look at different ways, if we want to change the formula, that any per pupil expenditure would include an inflationary factor so a dollar stays a dollar in an agreement. As we look at what is possibly proposed next year, we would see over a $600,000 cut in funds as compared to what we see this, la this, last, this year as compared to last year. Our board is confident that you will not be the first board, and I've gone back as far as I know how to go since 1985, that would cut the spending for education in Cumberland County. Again, thank you for your support. Uh, we're confident that we can reach an agreement uh, that will sustain the financial sustainability of the county. We know you'll have a lot of other challenges ahead and a lot of other needs, but please remember the Cumberland County Schools and all of our children. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Madam Clerk, are we? There are no further public comments. Speakers. Okay. At this time, we're at the approval of the agenda. Uh, any changes to the agenda, Madam? No changes. No changes to agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Uh, motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Commissioner Mr. Evans. Evans. Yeah. That is unanimous. Consent agenda. No, I was going to pull in there. I moved to approve what? the consent agenda. Well, second. I just have one question. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to have a whole discussion on one item, but on I, the approval of the final item regarding the Cumberland County Health Benefits Plan for fiscal year 2018. What was that? <clears throat> That item was um, mentioned, and um, we asked Chernoff Diamond to um, provide some more research. It was on grandfathering. Okay. Several years ago, we grandfathered in a no smoking discount, and Chernoff Diamond had a concern about it being out of compliance with federal law. They've come to the conclusion that it's in the, our best interest to eliminate that option. Okay. Um, it the in. The in the difference in the premium for those employees grandfathered in is 52 cents per month or $12.48 okay. a year. I just, I just want to, I just want to make sure that was the final item. Okay. Yes, sir. That is the Thank final you. item. Thank you, ma'am. You okay with that? Yes, sir. All right, so we have a motion by Commissioner Adams. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, second by Mr. Oh. Boos. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Commissioner Adams. Charles? Yes. That is unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> now we're down to the public hearing portion of our meeting. Um, County Manager. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item 3A is a public hearing to receive citizen input on the human services governance structure. And Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I'd like to ask our Assistant Manager, Mr. Holder, to provide a little bit of background information for the viewing public and the citizens here this evening before we open the public hearing. Okay. Mr. Chairman and to the full board, uh, as the board is aware and for the benefit of the listening and viewing public, in the state of North Carolina, the traditional governance model 
for county departments of social services and public health establishes separate governing boards with certain powers and authorities granted by North Carolina general statutes. In 2012, with the introduction of House Bill 438 and the eventual adoption of North Carolina General Statute 153A-77, the General Assembly allowed counties to exercise its authority to enact one of several alternate governance models for two or more of its human services departments. Since adoption of the 100 counties in the state of North Carolina, 31 now have passed resolutions adopting some alternate form of governance. The Cumberland County Board of Commissioners have been uh, considering, considering governance and consolidation options since late spring of 2017. Since that time, the county has been very methodical in its decision-making process. Activities have included uh, county management meeting internally with the directors of social services and public health, county management and DSS and public health directors meeting with representatives from the UNC School of Government to discuss governance and consolidation options, the Board of Commissioners discussing human service governance and consolidation during its annual goal setting session, the Board of Commissioners inviting members of the DSS Board and the Board of Health to attend a joint presentation from one of the UNC School of Government's subject matter experts, Dr. Jill Moore, on human service governance and consolidation options. And this evening, as a further step in this process, and pursuant to law, uh, the, uh, pursuant to law prior to being able to enact an alternate model, the Board of Commissioners has called this public hearing to receive citizen input and comments on the matter. Uh, as a reminder, the Board can consider the following regarding the governance of its human services departments. One, you can maintain your current structure as it is uh, currently organized. Two, you can abolish the DSS board and or the Board of Health and assume the duties and responsibilities of the abolished board or boards. Uh, should this option be considered uh, and the Board of Health be dissolved, there is a statutory requirement for the commissioners to appoint a health advisory committee. Uh, and the membership of that health advisory committee would have to be reflective of the current Board of Health composition. Uh, number three, you could establish a consolidated human service agency, which is inclusive of two or more human service departments, it's, and it's not limited to just public health and DSS, but anything that you as a county board of commissioners consider a human service department. Uh, you can establish a consolidated agency and appoint a new consolidated human services board. And lastly, you can establish a consolidated human services agency, and you, the Board of Commissioners, can assume the duties and responsibilities of that consolidated human services board. Uh, as is outlined in your memorandum uh, dated April the 10th, 2018, <coughs> and that is located in your agenda packet, management is proposing uh, the following next steps for the board uh, during your decision-making process. Uh, obviously, tonight we would have the, April, the uh, public hearing to receive citizen input. Uh, we are proposing during the periods of April 17th through May 1st uh, to distribute additional information to the board relating to governance structure <coughs> options. We are also proposing the distribution of a survey uh, to the board uh, on trying to target your desired outcomes of any changes uh, to your governance models and your priorities as a board. Uh, during that time, we would also collect and distribute those survey responses to you. And then uh, finally, May 7th, uh, we would propose a discussion of governance options and survey responses. Um, depending on the results of that discussion that on that evening, you could make a decision uh, to either maintain the current structure or by adoption of a resolution, you could change your uh, governance model. Again, this public hearing is a prerequisite to any changes uh, that would occur. So, Mr. Chairman, um, while no decision has been made at this point, the purpose of the public hearing this even, evening is to receive public comment on the board's consideration of these alternative options this evening. Um, as the clerk calls your name, 
Um, please come forward to the podium, state your full name and address for members of the board, then offer comment on this matter. Each speaker will be given three minutes to speak. So Mr. Chairman, at your pleasure, um, you can open the public okay. he hearing. At this time, we will open up the public hearing. Madam Clerk. We have two speakers this evening. Our first speaker is Ms. Ethelene Holden Baker. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Baker, welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Ethelene Holden Baker. Can you hear me? No. Okay. Yeah. My name is Ethelene Holden Baker, and my address is 810 Executive Place, Fayetteville 28305. I have um, gone online, and I heard about the fact that the board was consider the change back in March. So I'm aware of the various options. And the only thing I'd like to say in addition to other remarks regarding the, my um, reaction to the hearing is that I feel that everyone does not have a computer. And most of the information is on the computer, online. But if you would publicize it more in the paper, and I think that would be more, maybe have a greater attendance because the people should be aware of what's going on. But as far as I'm concerned, my personal view would recommend that you abolish the Cumberland County Board of Health or, and assume responsibilities of the board and you as a commissioners, as a group of commissioners, assume the responsibility of the Board of Health. And the question that I have, what would be the job of the advisory committee, although it was stated that the advisory committee would reflect the composition of the board as, it, as the Board of Health is now but my question is, and I hope you do answer that in your decision as to what direction you will go, what will be the, the um, duties of the advisory board. But I do recommend because of the fact that I did attend Board of Health meeting a couple of times because I was concerned about the adult clinic being closed, which you did open. But I feel that there may be some acts of depth, um, I would say partiality in the Board of Health group. So I, because as you as a board, you are elected, the commissions are elected by the people, and we are aware of what you, your philosophies are and what you want for the people. And we, more, you are more, we are more aware of what your views are rather than the Board of Health views. So my recommendation to you is to abolish the County Board of Health and appoint the advisory committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Our second and last speaker is Ms. Andrea Wallace-Williams. Ms. Williams, welcome. Thank you. Hello, how are you doing? Great. Hi. My name is Andrea Wallace-Williams. I live at 622 Longshank Street, Hope Mills, North Carolina, 28348. I'm not only here as a citizen tonight, but I am a 32-year employee of the Cumberland County Department of Public Health. So one of my questions is, as rumors go around the building, is how will this change affect us as employees? I'm hearing people say different things, but nobody has discussed this with us. Is this, how, how will this affect us? And um, wherever you guys decide if you're going to get rid of the Board of Health or have an advisory board, I would like for you to have people on there that are concerned about the citizens of this county. Because I've seen many board members come and go, and I don't feel like they really have the citizens um, are concerned about what's going on with the citizens' health. So if you guys get rid of the Board of Health and you pick other people, please pick people that are concerned about the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. There are no further speakers. Okay. We'll close the public hearing at this time. Any uh, commissioners have any discussions, questions? Uh, Commissioner Booth? Yeah, I have, uh, Mr. Holder, that was the best summary I've ever heard of where we were last year <laughs> to now in five minutes or less. Uh, I actually caught it, all of it. It was just, it was right on, right on point. I do have two questions though. Yes, I, um, you said in the next steps, possible recommendation kind of thing.